previously on Analog Output. This is an old school ramp core voltage controlled oscillators, but certainly there's a difference. And as far as this behavior goes, I think the J113 definitely looks a lot better. The triangle output, that also is looking good. Do I use Wilson's design and settle for zero to 88%? Or do I use the fixed voltage limits and get zero to 98%, but I lose whatever benefits I'm getting. Well, how about a third possibility? That's what I found on the breadboard. I think now it's time to build it. So it was time to build this VCO. First thing I did was the most challenging bit, soldering the surface mount match transistor pair, the SSM2212. And again, I've never done much surface mount and this was the second surface mount component I've soldered in the past year. But I think it went pretty smoothly. I used too much solder, but all the pins got connected properly. And I didn't even have to use any solder braid to clean up. There were no bridges, so it was good. Next, I did all the resistors, except for R24, which is the Tempco, and that came later. Then the diodes, and then the dip sockets. And now R24. There's a footprint for it, says R24, but you only use that footprint if you're going to use a regular non-Tempco resistor. If you have a Tempco, instead it goes on top of the SSM2212. And I used some heat sink compound to bond the two together. Next, I did the ceramic and tantalum capacitors. And Wilson specified ceramic for all of the caps below one microfarad, except for C6. But I used ceramic only for the ones below one nanofarad, plus the two 100 nanofarad bypass capacitors. And yes, there are only two, despite there being five op amp chips in a dual OTA. Um, the two 1 microfarad caps are the tantalums, and for the remaining 100 nanofarad caps, as well as the 1 and 2 nanofarad ones, I used polyester film, which went in next. And for C6, the main integrating cap, I used polypropylene. And it turns out the polypropylene cap I had was too wide for the footprint on the board, and it ended up sort of half sitting on top of a resistor, but I was able to solder it there okay. I also put in the one through-hole resistor, the J113 JFET, which I substituted for the PN4391. Next came the trimmer pots, all seven of them. And last but not shortest, the two electrolytic caps. That was it for the main board components. Now for the power connection, Wilson was not designing for Cosmo, of course, or Eurorack, and he just provided solder pads for each voltage and ground. So to make it compatible with my Cosmo slash Eurorack style power distribution system, I built one of these. This is the little board I designed with footprints for a 10-pin ribbon cable header and a 3-pin terminal block. There's also footprints for power reversal protection Schottky diodes and electrolytic capacitors in case they're needed. You can leave off the caps and jumper the diodes if they're not. For this module, there are electrolytics on the main board, but not Schottky's, so I installed the diodes here. And this board can be attached with a spacer and screw through any of the mounting holes. And you run wires from the terminal block to the solder pads on the main board. And then you have a place to plug in your power cable. Next comes the wiring. I soldered the needed wires to the main board. And then I put the jacks and pots on my front panel. This is an FR4 panel PC board material I designed and had fabricated. And I cut and bent a bracket out of sheet aluminum. One side goes uh, between the panel and two of the pots and the other side attaches to the main PCB using spacers. There are three attenuator pots on the panel that aren't in Wilson's design, one for each of the exponential and linear FM jacks and the pulse width modulation jack. These just go between the jack and the PCB with the third terminal connected to ground. 
Here you can see the wires connecting the jack tips and ground to the attenuator pots. By the way, the panel has a ground plane that all the jacks are in contact with, so I didn't need to run a ground wire to all 10 jacks. Then I soldered the wires from the PCB to the panel components and added the power board. Now maybe you've noticed I didn't install the modification I talked about last time for the uh, pulse width pot voltages. I wanted to verify my breadboard findings before doing that, so I just connected that pot as per Wilson's design and made a note to myself to just tack those wires in place, uh, anticipating I'd want to remove them later, which I did. I installed the ICs and checked for shorts on the power rails, and there weren't any. I applied power and looked at the ramp output, and there it was, and so were the other outputs. They were pretty ugly till I set the trimmer pots to something roughly approximating the right values, and I'll talk about that more in the next video. And then I tried adjusting the pulse width, and it behaved pretty much the same as on the breadboard. I, I got to the pot limits before reaching the point where the pulse wave shuts down, which meant that I was not getting the narrowest and widest possible pulse widths. So I went ahead and installed my little modification, and... I uh, was surprised to find that I still hit the pot limits before the shutdown. I built this using 100K and 24K resistors, which gives you a gain of 1.24, and I thought that would be plenty. It was enough when I built it on the breadboard, but here, for some reason, it wasn't quite enough gain. So I changed the 24K resistors to 33K, and now the pulse width does get to the shutdown point before it reaches the pot limits, which means it can go anywhere from 0% pulse width to about 98%. Here's the mod, which I built on a little piece of strip board and hot glued to the pulse width pot. I did a few more tests. Here's a screenshot showing the linear FM input is working. Uh, the blue line is low frequency square wave that goes to the linear FM input and you can see the yellow line is the VCO. It changes frequency when the square wave changes. Then I tidied up the wiring a little and I screwed down the power board, put the knobs on. It's done, or at least it's put together. It's not calibrated. I'll talk about that in the next video along with the wave shape setup. So if you want to hear about that, subscribe, stay tuned, See you next time on Analog Output.